Right there, we've probably uh, seen these little solar lights you get for your back garden. A little skewer there, some sort of piece of obscure glass. I've seen these bits of glass sold as other things as well, like ashtrays and who knows, generic broken glass effect dome there, quite nice. Um, I actually think that would make a nice pair of eyes for Halloween or something with some uh, LEDs in there. Uh, what have I got? So we've got these little solar panels on the back. A little uh, circuit board with a little chip. I forget what chip this is. I do have some. QX5252? No, that's not it, is it? Yes, it is. Um, that's a little chip that manages uh, charging a battery. It manages a little buck convert here that boosts the voltage from the battery up. I believe this is a little 1.2 uh, nickel metal hydride battery in here, 1.2 volts, absolutely gutless. Uh, it says 600 milliamp hour at 1.2 volts. Uh, you'd be lucky, I reckon, out of a battery that size, but maybe, maybe. So the problem I found with these little circuits is in the UK, you probably heard it rains a lot. It's also quite dark in the winter as well. Uh, my back garden doesn't get direct sunlight through the through the winter. So these things don't really keep charged, they don't really give out much light and if they do it's probably about 20 minutes worth of light and then they go out again. So although they're quite cheap, they're not really actually useful for lighting my back garden. I'd like to say I don't go in the back garden in the winter when it's cold and dark but we do have our recycling is out in the back garden, I do have a storage shed out in the back garden, I do have to go in and out and quite often do it in the dark or looking for a torch. So what I've decided to do is forget these little one pound jobs, get rid of that, and get rid of that, and get rid of that. And I'm going to make a slightly beefier version of a solar powered light. So I'm going to make use of one of these really old um, 18650s are they? Yes, 16850s, whatever they are. Lithium batteries, uh, 1 uh, 3.7 volts to what 4.2 or something like that. Now. They should, it's got it written on it, 18650, great. Uh, one thing to point out is that you shouldn't solder to these like I have, but I did leave the tabs on and I have actually soldered to the original welded tabs and not to the battery itself. Uh, very careful not to heat these up, they could explode. Uh, don't short them, they could explode. Don't overcharge them, they could explode. You probably know the, uh, know the bells and whistles of those batteries. So I'm gonna use one of these batteries. I'm going to use a little solar panel. I don't have the solar panel here. I've ordered some. I thought I had some in stock, but I don't. And they're about, uh, I think, 63 mil by 63 mil. They're rated at four and a half volts, about 90 milliamps, and they're about a pound each. So I've got some of those on the way. The other thing you want is some white LEDs. I'm actually going to put six LEDs in. One, two, three, four, five, six, great, okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is uh, create a little holder for these. So I'm actually gonna 3D print it. I'm gonna use some uh, basic CAD software, produce a little model, and then I'm going to 3D print that using some transparent-ish uh, ABS material. Yeah, that's what it is. So that's the finished effect, is a little cartridge six holes in it. These are angled out so they'll actually spread the focal pattern of the of the LED light there. There's also a little pivot point in the end, you might just see it there. Now that'll actually allow me to tilt the light inside its holder. Um, one of the things I'm going to have to do with one of these LEDs is just get some characteristics off it. So we could either use our multimeter, there's a multimeter here, I could set it to for diode setting, if it will turn on, there it is, pull it in the correct mode, will the light help, yeah it helps a bit, and what I can actually do is get one of my LEDs, here it is, connect it up across the probes, actually see it lights up and it is telling me that this LED has a forward voltage of 2.59 volts, that's the voltage it requires to light up. Um, 
So it will light on 2.59 volts. Anything more than that, I'm going to have to put a bit of a resistor in. So I'm going to need some resistance to be able to run this LED off uh, whatever our battery is going to give us between 3.6 and 4.2 volts. So we'll definitely need some resistance. Now I'm just going to do some other testing here. I'm going to set this off using our bench supply. Light it up. There is our 2.7 volts, nice and bright. Okay, it wasn't as bright off the multimeter because the multimeter is not putting anywhere near as much current through it. And what I'll actually do is crank that up and you can see it gets brighter, brighter, brighter. And look, it's dimming now. So at some point, four volts, it starts to dim. Now that's actually getting hot in my fingers. And if I was to crank that up, it could, phys it could physically explode. And I should probably have my goggles on, which I don't. The other thing I want to have a quick look at is its pattern here. So you can see we get quite a good dispersion of pattern um, closer I get. So I've, I've done this test and I've based the results of that test onto the kind of angle that I want my LEDs inserted into to get the pattern spread nicely. Now the other thing I did test is with that cranked up to about 3.5 volts get nice brightness out but they do get warm and the other thing I notice when I've less I'm running a while is they actually start to dim and you've reduced the lifespan of them so I want to run those close to 2.5 volts maybe a little bit more 2.8 at 20 milliamps seems fine for me so I'm, because I've stressed this LED out, I'm not going to put it back in with the rest of them. It, it's scrap. The next thing that I'm going to want, if I can get into it, is one of these little passive infrared sensors, PIRs. Now I've done this before and I've actually used a little pickaxe chip or a, a pick processor. You could use a, an Arduino, I guess, but any microcontroller would, would do. The nice thing about these little devices is one they're cheap we've got our uh, kind of diffuser here infrared diffuser I'm guessing that's called we've got the sensitivity and the time delay we've got an output to trigger something and we've got voltage in and it'll actually run I believe three volts all the way up to something quite big 15 20 volts I'm not sure I haven't got the data sheet in front of me uh, it's probably got a little onboard processor of its own for the price, very useful, mounts up nicely, about a pound again online, forget the exact number, HC something. Over on uh, Thingiverse I've actually created a model of this, so if you want to have a go at using this you can uh, search up your PIR sensor and actually find one of these to insert into your model and it will help you line up any holes that you're going to use to mount it. So we're going to use that, we've got our LEDs, we've got our battery, what else do we need? Well, we're going to need some more casing for this. Uh, the other thing I've got here is this little designed enclosure, a bit basic, but we've got our 63 by 63 mil slot enclosed there for our solar panel, little hole for the wires to go through. Probably glue it in with a bit of silicon um, or silicone. I will probably spray paint this to make it watertight. Got a couple of lugs on the back there to screw it onto something with. I could have probably put the lugs in the back here. I actually wanted to keep the, the back in one piece. Inside I've actually 3D printed as part of the model a little battery holder for the lithium battery there. Um, got some mounting holes there for a back cover to go on. So that will be useful for holding everything. I'll just slot my battery in there for now. And if it will go in there, will you go? It did go. There we go. So the battery will just slot in there like that. And the rest of the components will go on the other piece of the case which I'm about to find now. The final piece of the puzzle is this little piece I've printed here. This uh, just a flat plate, little box on the back, uh, some little mountain legs there. And that's just going to simply slot together so we'll have that in there we'll have 
that in there and I'll uh, show you the construction of this so we've already got the battery in the back brilliant 